Hi, I'm Steve Spencer from SMB Capital. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the things that I think about and look, look at when I'm looking to buy a pullback in the market. And the way that I normally do this is via the SPY ETF, uh, whether that's getting long um, the ETF, buying calls, selling puts. Um, those are the different ways when the market gets down to an area where I feel like the risk reward is really good on the long side that I'm going to express my, my long bias. So um, a few things. Here's a, we're looking at a chart, a 30-minute chart over the last month or so of the SPY. And what we had about a month ago was um, very strong support around 204, a little bit above 204. For about a one-week period there, uh, we kept on testing that area. Uh, and twice, actually, came down pretty hard through that area. But we never, we never closed below that area. And eventually, after that week, uh, with a gap up that led to us very quickly trading up to 210 on the spies. And so the way that I look at the market is I'm not really looking at the moving averages or the FIB levels. I'm looking at where there was demand, um, where there were buyers in the market uh, previously, and did the market uh, make a significant move from that area. And so when we started to see weakness um, last week, when we failed after a rally up to about 210 and started to come off, what I started to think about in my mind was, okay, what are the levels we can pull back to? And then there was 206, which was kind of a gap fill from a couple of weeks ago. And then below 206, if we continued to show weakness, I would then have my game plan ready to go for 204, which was an area where I'd feel much more comfortable looking to express ideas on the long side. I want to talk a little bit about the intraday kind of setup, what I'm looking for, how you can play this from an intraday perspective and a position, put yourself in a position of strength. So coming into Friday, we had our not NFP non-farm payroll number for the month of April. And th the reason why this interests me is it's a strong catalyst, macro catalyst, and many of the larger players are going to put on trades after that number comes out. Um, and what the reason why that makes that great is we're at a key level in the market, and the big players are going to come out. And if they decide to sell or buy or whatever they're doing, um, I'm going to see how the market reacts in that area where I'm expecting a bounce. And with those big players involved in a day like today, um, perhaps that can even lead to an outsized move to the upside as opposed to just a little bit small bounce from that area of support. So looking at the chart from the pre-market, what you can see is the number comes out, the market, the market flushes through 204. I had a target area around the 20360s based on going back to April. That would be an area to look to buy. And then when I'm buying there, what I'm looking for is, can it get back above 204 very quickly? And if it, if it spikes up to maybe an area where there was some resistance in the pre-market, I'll look to sell. And when the market opens up, is it holding above 204? Then look for a move to the upside to my target area. 205 to 205.30 was the target area we discussed in the morning meeting. That was a spot if you were buying in the pre-market to look to sell and actually look to short if there was a failure there. Because when the market starts to get a little bit more fear and comes into major support, what we'll see, and we saw that on the 30-minute the chart that I showed you, was that support area gets tested, we pop up, we get tested again, then maybe we gap up the following day, go up a little bit more, then we test it again. And so my thought process is that there's going to be some sort of retest. I don't know if it's going to be a retest of the pre-market low or it's going to make a little bit of a higher low. In this case, it actually made a higher low at 204. We moved sideways for about 15 minutes and then started to tick up again uh, and then actually failed around 204.70, 204.80. And at which point, we're basically just stuck in the middle of the range and we're waiting for some sort of consolidation and a break in the afternoon. Uh, what we saw here actually before, right before I shot this video was the market actually consolidated in the mid 204s and then broke to the upside. And as I left the desk to film this, we were at 205. Really, the question becomes for the final two hours is what's going to happen in this 205 to 20530 area? Do we actually continue to fail to hold above that? Or if we break through right at the end of the day, we would expect some sort of squeeze right up to the 206, the 206 area. If we actually fail to break out through that zone, then maybe we meander all the way back down to the mid to low 204s. But regardless, of what happens the rest of the day. That buy on the flush in the pre-market through 204 is a great buy. The buy on the pullback um, in the late morning to the 204 area, where you can again risk very small 
Um, those are very good risk reward buys. And ultimately, if the market closes strong and closes above 205.30, you're now in a position of strength to take out a swing position over the weekend to see if we can capture a move back up to 206, 207. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into what I'm thinking about into buying a market pullback. Again, this is an example of using the ETF. The other thing that you're gonna do when the market hits those support areas is sell some puts for strikes. In this case, I sold the 208 puts for next week. Um, bought the two, I believe I bought the 207 calls for next week. And so as the market moves higher, those puts come down in value. I start to accrue some money there and hopefully the calls will move up in value as well. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Become a member of our trading community by joining SMBU Premium. Each month, as a community, we'll work together to improve our trading with a shared hour of learning. On our trading desk in New York City, the best traders continually grow. In fact, the best traders trade to grow. SMBU Premium is packed with 12 webinars, one a month, focused on market-specific trader training that will help you become a better trader by the end of the month. Invest in yourself, invest in your trading. As I wrote in the playbook, tomorrow you can be better than you are today. SMBU Premium, how good can you be?